Hi, I'm Tiffany. Today, I'm going to show you how to subtract two and three digit numbers. Subtracting two and three digit numbers. When subtracting two and three digit numbers, there's a couple of things you do need to keep in mind. You want to line up your numbers by place value, then subtract. You also want to make sure you remember to regroup when you need to. Example number one, we have 57 minus 16. I need to rewrite these problems so they're lined up considering the place value, just like I explained in the last slide. So I'm going to take my pen and write 57 and write 16 directly underneath. This problem is pretty easy to line up correctly in the beginning because both numbers only have two digits so there's not too much to think about whenever both of your numbers have the same amount of digits you're just gonna stack the numbers directly on top of each other and you don't really have to think about it too much so I've stacked the 57 and the 16 on top of each other so the 7 and the 6 they're both in the ones position of the numbers so they end up both in the ones position when it's time to subtract the 5 and the 1, they're both in the tens position, so they end up both in the tens position when it's time to subtract also. Whenever you get your ones place lined up, it's going to automatically line up the rest of the problem. So you have to remember that. Just line up your ones place and everything else is going to work out as long as everything is written directly underneath. Okay, now it's time to subtract. 7 minus 6. If I have 7 of something and I take 6 away, how many am I going to have? I'm going to have 1 left. So I write a 1 in. Come to my next column. If I have 5 of something and I take 1 away, how many am I going to have left? I'm going to have 4 left. So the answer to example number 1 is 41. Let's go on to example number 2. Example number 2. 63 minus 21. 63 minus 21 looks like this. This is another example that's pretty easy for me to line up because both my numbers only have two digits. So I'm just stacking the numbers directly on top of each other. Now let's subtract. If I have three of something and I take one away, how many do I have left? Two. So you write that in. If I have six of something and I take two away, how many do I have left? Four. So you write that in. So the answer to example number two is 42. Here's example number three. We have a little more to work with, a little more to think about because our numbers don't have the same number of digits. The first number is 962 and the second number is 47. So I need to make sure I have these numbers lined up correctly. I'm gonna write the first number down. 962 looks like this. Now I need to write my 47 down but considering place value. Remember like I explained in the last slide, you just make sure that you line up your ones place and everything else will follow. So the four is in the tens place and the seven is in the ones place. Okay. What number's in the ones place over here for the 962? The two's in the ones place. So you write the seven directly below the two. It's gonna look like that. That means the four has to go here because they go together. Now we're going to subtract. Let's see what happens. If I have two of something and I take seven away, can I do that? I can't even do that. So I have to figure out something. This is where the regrouping comes in. 962 is a larger number than 47, so we can definitely subtract it. But the thing is, when we're dealing with the single place value, sometimes the number on the bottom is larger than the number on the top, so you're going to have to borrow to make it work while we're solving the problem. So, I need to cross out this 2 and change it to a 12. Cross out 2. So I crossed out my 2 and turned it into a 12. I didn't get this one out of thin air. I had to borrow it. So what I did was I went over here to this column, so I must also cross out my 6 and make it one digit less, which is going to be 5. The 1 from here that I added came from this column. That's where I'm getting this from. 
okay? Whenever you have to borrow, you have to remember that this is a two-step process. You can't just make your first number larger by adding a one to it. You have to remember to take a value away from the number to the left of it. So now I have 12 minus 7. What's that? 5. Here's 5. Take 4 away. What do I have? 1. My 9, it was not touched. This empty space here is like the same thing as having a 0. So I know that if I have 9 and I take 0 away, what do I have? I still have 9 because you didn't take anything away from it. So the answer to example number 3 is 915. Let's move on to example number 4. Example number four. It's time to subtract again. They've already lined our numbers up for us, so that really helps us out. All we need to do is make sure we get our regrouping right if it's needed. It looks like it's needed, because I'm already looking. I have eight, and I need to take nine away from it. I cannot do that. So I have to cross out my eight, add a one to it, which we're gonna borrow from this column. Let's go ahead and do that right now. This three turns into a two. So now I can subtract. I have 18 and I need to take 9 away. What do I get? I get 9. Here I have 2 and I need to take 1 away. What do I get? 1. So what is my answer? 19. So the answer to example number 4 is 19. Let's move on to example number 5. Example number 5. 685 minus 96. Again, I cannot subtract in the beginning, so I need to borrow. I have 5. I need to cross that out and turn it into 15. That means I also need to borrow here and make this 8 a 7. Now, let's subtract my first column. If I have 15 and I take 6 away, what do I end up with? 9. So you write that in, in the same column. If I have 7 and I take 9 away, whoops, we can't do that. We're not done borrowing. We need to continue. Sometimes you will have to regroup more than one time. And I do want to clarify something. The proper term to, to explain this is regrouping. But sometimes you will look into a math book or you'll hear your teacher say borrow. And so I've been used, I've used both terms throughout so you know what I'm talking about. Um, so the proper term to use is regroup. But if you hear borrow, this is what they're talking about, regrouping. So it's the same thing. I just want to make sure you understand. Okay. I cannot take 9 away from 7. So, I have to do the same process like I had to do with this 5 initially. So, let's pretend like this 8 was never even here, never even crossed out. It was just a 7, and we had to take it away a 9. So, just like we did over here with this 5, we're going to add a 1 to it. Like we did here, we had, a we had a 5, and we made it a 15 by adding a 1. And in order to add that 1, that 1 didn't come from thin air, so we had to borrow from this 6. So, this 6 is now going to become a 5. So now I can subtract my second column. I have 17 and I'm going to take away 9. What do I get? I get 8. Write that in. 5. There's nothing here. So that means if I have 5 and I take nothing away from it, I'm still left with 5. So the answer to number 5 is 589. Let's move on to example number 6. Example number 6. Again, I cannot start subtracting right away because my first column is not in balance. It says if I have 2 and I take 7 away from it, what do I have? Well, really, I can't do that, so I need to regroup. I need to cross my 2 out, make it a 12. If I have 12 and I take 7 away, I get 5. Cross my 4 out and make it a 3. That's where the 1 came from. Now let's subtract my next column. If I have 3 and I take 6 away, what do I get? Oh, I can't actually do that. I have to regroup again. 
So that means I'm going to have to turn this 13 into a 3, cross out my 6, make it a 5, just like I did on the example before. So I had to regroup two times here. So if I have 13 and I subtract 6, what do I end up with? I end up with 7. If I have 5 and I subtract 3, what do I end up with? I end up with 2. So the answer to example number 6 is 275. Thanks for watching. That's the end of this video.